Hi, this is Mrs. Verbal. This is Chemical Reactions Part 2. So in this video, we're going to classify chemical reactions, and then we're going to identify the characteristics of different classes of chemical reactions. So types of chemical reactions. So if we were to represent each letter by a compound, we have many different types of chemical reactions. So notice we can have two reactants forming one product, or we could have one reactant forming two products, or we could have sort of like a dance where partners exchange um, partners. And we could also have what we call combustion, where we have a reactant combined with oxygen to create products. So the first type is composition or synthesis. This is probably the easiest type to remember. So you're taking two or more substances and you're only getting one product. Um, an example of this would be making aspirin. So you start with um, a couple different reactants and together you get one product. Another example of this would be forming water. So we could take hydrogen gas, you remember making that in the lab, and combining that with oxygen. We need a catalyst, but when we put those two gases together, we can get water. Another example is ammonia. If we combine it with phosphoric acid, it'll form ammonium phosphate. Another example is if we take uh, the elemental form of phosphorus, which is P4, and combine it with the elemental sulfur, which is S8, we could get diphosphorus pentasulfide. Okay, so synthesis reaction. We're looking at two or more substances reacting to form one product. So here we have an example of calcium oxide and water to form calcium hydroxide. So once again, we're gonna take our formulas and convert them into, um, or the chemical names and convert them into formulas. So here we have CaO, and you've got to remember that the cations, they, um, when they do the crisscross, they actually um, reduce down to a subscript of one for calcium oxide. So please remember that there's an understood one here and here. So we combine that with water, and notice that we only have one product. This is considered synthesis. Here's another example. So we have sulfur dioxide, and it's reacting with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. So once again, we have two substances forming just one product. Okay, decom decomposition, the way I remember it, is always opposite of synthesis. So instead of having um, more than two reactants, we only have one reactant. Now, decomposition typically has to have an energy source. So it needs to have heat, it needs to have light, or maybe electricity to break down the chemical substance. An example of this would be um, potassium chlorate. You've actually done this in the lab where you heated up potassium chlorate in a um, evaporating dish and you got potassium chloride and oxygen was bubbling from the system. And then um, here we have sugar that if we heated it we could just get carbon by itself and water. Okay so another example of decomposition would be ammonium nitrate breaking down into dinitrogen monoxide and water when heated to a high temperature. So the way you would write this is ammonium hydroxide, I'm sorry, ammonium nitrate, and notice that there's a solid symbol after that representing the phase that it's in. And we get dinitrogen monoxide and water. Now, please remember, you have to balance your equation, so you can't just write down the skeleton. You actually have to include any coefficients that you might need. And then here we have sodium azide. So sodium azide is actually something, it's a powder that typically is used in airbags. So if you have a crash, it is activated. It is a very rapid explosion. 
Um, it produces nitrogen gas and solid sodium. So notice that um, we have just one reactant on the left hand side and then we have two products. And once again, we need to add coefficients to make sure that they are balanced. Okay, combustion. This is probably the most fun for some people to identify. Combustion always has oxygen. You cannot have combustion without it. So um, if you thought there were flames in space, the only way you could have flames if there was the presence of oxygen. So notice that when you do have combustion, energy is released in the form of heat and light. So you could take hydrogen and react it with oxygen. Gee, this sounds familiar. And as a result, you get water. So here is the previous equation that we saw earlier. So we technically can call this synthesis and combustion. And once again, notice that there are coefficients. Okay, this is more of a challenge for students. So we've talked about um, synthesis, decomposition, combustion, single replacement. The way I look at it is I'm always going to have a element by itself. So if you notice that there is one element that is a reactant, that's a good sign that we're talking about single replacement reaction. So typically a metal will replace hydrogen. Here we have lithium metal, so it's an element by itself, and it will react with hydrogen and water to form lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. Um, also, we can have situations where the element that's by itself as a reactant will replace another element that is combined with a second element. And as a result, we will only see um, an element by itself in the product. So here we have copper reacting with silver nitrate and as a result in the product we see silver metal by itself and copper nitrate. Now how does this work? This is actually a chart that you're going to get on the back of your periodic table. I always give this to students just so they know what to look for. Um, so notice that anything that's towards the bottom of the list is not going to replace another metal. So gold obviously is not going to replace anything above it. Iron will not replace anything above it. Iron, however, will replace anything below it. So if I wanted to replace iron with copper, I could. Um, lithium will replace anything below it. So lithium is probably the most active out of all the metals. Now you could apply that to halogens. So fluorine is the most active out of all the metals. I'm sorry, all of the halogens, it will replace any halogen that's below it. However, iodine is the least active. It will not replace anything above it. Okay, so double replacement is actually a different type of reaction. It's not similar to um, the single replacement reaction. So the way I think of it is, and I know this is a little dated, but if you had a square dance and you had... Uh, two sets of partners, they would essentially switch dance partners. So notice how element A gives up element X to element B, and as a result, they switch partners. So here we have calcium hydroxide combined with hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride and water. Notice there are no elements by themselves, okay? Everybody has a partner. Now, one of the examples of double replacement is formation of, of a precipitate. So notice that you get evidence of a gas or evidence of a solid, or you will get production of water. These are all signs that you have a double replacement reaction. So when you write a double replacement reaction, please note that you want to write down the skeleton first. Then you want to identify the individual partners. Make sure you always switch partners with either uh, group. And then after you do that, you obviously want to make sure that you complete it and you want to balance it by adding coefficients. 
So if you don't add the coefficients, you're not completing the chemical reaction. Okay, so in summary, the, the types of chemical reactions that we need to know from this uh, chapter is synthesis, combustion, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement. Synthesis, I just look for one product. Combustion, I look for the presence of oxygen. Decomposition, I look for one reactant. Single replacement, I look for an element by itself, either on the reactant side or the product side. And then double replacement, notice that every element has a partner and we're essentially switching partners. Okay, so classifying chemical reactions helps us to understand, remember, and identify the various types of chemical reactions. And it's important for us to remember the activity series for metals or halogens so that we can determine whether or not a single replacement reaction will take place.